Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility, the show we do on Wednesdays here on the channel, where we take a look at some of the new album releases that have come out in the worlds of heavy metal, hard rock, classic rock, progressive rock, jazz, fusion. That's kind of the genres that we cover here on the channel. Today, we're going to take a look at the brand new album from US of A, hard rock legend Styx, Crash of the Crown. I believe this is album release number 17 from them. All right, so they uh, this follows up the mission from a couple of years ago. So this lineup basically has released uh, you know new studio album Cyclorama, The Mission, and now Crash of the Crown. And uh, you know of course this is the band fronted by Tommy Shaw and James Young, both guitarist vocalist. Uh, you got Lawrence Gowan. On keyboards and lead vocals, Chuck Pinozo, founding member on bass guitar, uh, Ricky Phillips also on bass guitar, and uh, Todd Superman on drums and percussion. So um, that is the you know the bulk of the band. That's that's the lineup that's been together for quite a while now. Uh, we've also got uh, Will Ivankovich, I believe is how he says his name, Ivankovich who produced the album, co-wrote some of the stuff, also contributed some guitars and keyboards and soundscapes and backing vocals and all that sort of thing. So uh, this is uh, Crash of the Crown. I've got the shirt as well, which I just picked up. So, um, you know, you got in the beginning of the booklet, you've got kind of an explanation of kind of what went into the recording of this album. They actually started this pre-COVID, all right, and finished it up during the pandemic. And now here it is. You got all the lyrics uh, you know, a lot of the song lyrics are based on kind of, uh, you know, dark things and events that have happened in world history over the millenniums, millennia, however you say that. Uh, and there's there's some themes on this album that, you know, when you kind of listening and reading the lyrics and you're like, wow, that's did they like write this post COVID or during COVID. And actually most of this album was already taking shape before all the events that led to the last year and a half. But, uh, there's some applicable themes going on throughout this album. But, uh, so, you know, really interesting to kind of sit and I'm, I'm not much of a lyric guy. Uh, however, uh, there is some interesting stuff going on here. Definitely. And I think a lot of thought went behind the writing of this album. So, uh, you know, they did, uh, release a couple of tracks, one or two, I think before the album came out, it's interesting to kind of see, like early feedback from fans and whatnot when those first couple songs came out to I me mean, you had people who obviously you know really fell in love with the new material and other people like oh uh, they just basically you know released an album, a boring album of stuff that sounds like Queen and all that and I'm thinking well you know the only Queen sounding song on this is the first song they released as a single and that was the title track and I think they did that intentionally as an homage to Queen the rest of the album didn't sound like that at all so for those folks who were saying that uh, you know that they're trying to rip off Pink Floyd or Queen or whatever uh, it's really not the case guys it's a sticks album I give them a lot of credit though they have tried to kind of reinvent themselves yet again uh, I think one of the things that you know and I'll probably get to it at the end uh, you know we've got the Dennis DeYoung new album which came out a week before this and kind of comparing the two of them, I think Dennis goes back a lot to the sticks well. Uh, and, you know, half that album is comprised of, you know, tracks that sound like kind of classic sticks. And the more poppy stuff that he's always liked to do that, have, that were on a lot of those 80s and 90s sticks albums. And his solo, solo career, right? Whereas this is sticks saying, all right, you know what? We're kind of loving this kind of progressive, pro prog, I was going to say prog rock, progressive rock thing that we've been doing that we started with the mission. And we're going to kind of continue in that vein. This is, this is a very different album for them. This, they're not rehashing anything they've done before. They're really trying some new things. It's uh, the the album is a bit longer than the mission. Mission was very was a very brief album. It just got barely over a half hour. This is I think 40, 42, 43 minutes long. Fifteen tracks. This is a grower of an album. This is not an album that the first time you listen to it, you're going to be like, okay, very immediate. You know, you can uh, hit singly stuff on here and anthems and all that. This is very different. 
this is much much more it's not a concept album but it kind of comes across like that and i think it's an album that needs to be taken as a whole uh, some of the tracks segue into each other. There's different flavors all throughout this album. There's some of your more lush prog rockers. There's a few hard rockers on here. There's some stuff that has like kind of folky and, and pop uh, melodies and things like that. A lot of great instrumentation. Um, it's very different. You're not going to confuse this with Pieces of Eight, with Cornerstone, with Grand Illusion, with Equinox. You're not even going to confuse it with The Mission, all right, or Cyclorama. It definitely stands on its own. And I will say, I probably listened to this probably six times already in the week that I've had it. And every time I listen to it, I'm liking it even more. And I think some of the criticisms that I had in the beginning, which I'll talk about at the end, I'm really lightening up on. So let's go through the song. So it starts off with uh, The Fight of Our Lives, the opening track, hard driving prog rock. All right. Fast paced, great riffs multi-layered vocals i mean i just love what they're doing with the vocals on this album you know lawrence and tommy and jy just you know man big choruses just uh if you love you know 10 cc and city boy and queen and you know bands like that who did these huge things with the vocal layers even the early sticks because come on sticks were doing that back in the day as well all over the place on this album uh great proggy keyboards on this track I, I, you know, I just love this song. Here's my issue with it. It's not even two minutes long. They kind of did that with me a little bit on the mission, where I, I felt a, a couple of the songs could have been fleshed out a little bit more. I, I kind of have that issue with some of the tracks on here as well. There is nothing on this album over four minutes long. And it's like, guys, I love you, but... It's okay to write four, five, and six minute long songs. Uh, there are a couple tracks on here that are so good, but man, at like two and a half, three minutes, it's done. And you just, you want them to keep going, right? Um, and I, ha I, I have that problem with some of the tracks on here. That being said, the tracks are excellent, okay? Even though I wanted more, they're still great the way they are. Uh, a Monster follows up track number two. Again, very melodic prog rock great Tommy Show vocals, got these nice layers of acoustic and electric guitars. The guitars are really nicely thought out and layered on this entire album. Uh, Tala agrees. Lovely keyboards from Lawrence. Killer track. That's followed up by Reveries. Again, soaring prog rock. Great Lawrence Gowan vocals. The synths that he's doing on this are amazing. Great lush melodies. Uh, a lovely track. Hold Back the Darkness. All right. Darker. More haunting piece. Got moody synths, got a little piano, acoustic guitars. Uh, you got uh, Lawrence and Tommy sharing vocals, all right, doing a great job. Very Pink Floyd sounding, okay? Uh, highlight track on the album. Definitely one of the darker ones. Uh, Save Us From Ourselves comes up next. Big hard rocker, killer Tommy Show vocals. I absolutely adore the chorus on this. What a hook. Man, these guys know how to write hooks. Tommy's songwriting is just off the charts uh, throughout this album. And, you know, they're all taking part in the songwriting for the most part, but this is more like a Tommy and Lawrence album. Uh, JY not contributing as much, but I still his presence is still felt. Um, but again, the, the track is like three minutes. Um, I wanted more. There, there's some of these songs that are just so good, you want an extra minute. You want an extra guitar solo. You want one more go around with the chorus, right? Crash of the Crown. Title track is up next. Big, bright rocker. Lots of prog. JY, Lawrence, and Tommy. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not asking for your commentary. Not asking for your commentary, Tala. Uh, Queen, 10cc influences on this one. This is the one song in the album that really sounds like Queen. Uh, other than that, I don't get it anywhere else. Uh, great keyboards and riffs. It's a clear homage to Queen. Fun song, majestic, killer. Uh, up next, Our Wonderful Lives, which to me is kind of like the sequel to Fooling Yourself, uh, An Angry Young Man from the Grand Illusion album. Tommy Shaw at his absolute best. Such a good song. Common Ground is up next. Hey, come on, out. Hold on, guys. Out. Nothing like being interrupted mid-review by your husky. Anyway, back to our wonderful lives. I already talked about that. Common Ground. Old school sounding sticks. You got big stabbing synthesizers. Acoustic and electric guitar layers. Organ. Big riffs. Those soaring vocal harmonies. Prog rock. Hard rock. Colliding. One of the top tracks on the album. 
Uh, also the longest at four minutes and one second. 401, that's the longest song on the album. Just think about that. And then this, this is the, uh, exactly what I wanted from some of the other tracks. It is perfectly fleshed out. And a, there's like a handful of other songs on this album that are like, you know, 245, 320. I wanted that extra minute because I think they could have done something even more outstanding. But great stuff nonetheless. Uh, Sound the Alarm, another lush, soaring, melodic piece. Tommy, again, doing a wonderful job with the vocals. Uh, Long Live the King, big, bright, melodic prog. Vocals by Tommy and Lawrence. Outstanding, nice harmony guitars on this one. Another killer track. Uh, Lost at Sea, quick little, I think it's like 45 seconds long. Uh, big love for the Beatles. I know the, the band, and especially Lawrence, are a big Beatles fan. So, uh, yeah, Lost at Sea. Cool little ditty track. Again, would have loved to hear it a little, little bit longer. Uh, coming out on the other side, amazing. Lovely progressive rock. Layers of keyboards. Great Lawrence Gowan vocals. So melodic and catchy. Um, it, it just, you know, the, the band is really showing all the cool different things they can do on this album, which I really like. Uh, then we've got another favorite of mine, To Those. To Those. Just, I love the melody. Uh, again, another one of the heavier tracks on the album. Big riffs. The chorus is absolutely immense. Plenty of keyboards. But again, it's three minutes long. I wanted another minute and a half, two minutes easily. Expand on it, guys. You've, you've got an absolutely killer album here. Could have been even more killer with just a couple of a handful of the tracks, just with a little bit extra on them. Uh, another farewell. Short keyboard instrumental interlude. Uh, and then they finish out the album with uh, Stream, which is another really cool song. Moody, lush Pink Floyd influences. Uh, nice slide guitar and keyboards on it. Really, really cool. Kind of like moody or darker track to kind of finish out the album. But uh, like I said, I'm digging this a lot. And I'm liking it more and more as I go on. And I think the more I listen to it, the more I'm thinking that uh, I don't have as much of an issue with the song lengths as I did initially. Um, but there are a couple tracks which I definitely think another minute or so would have really helped them because what you got is incredible. But you know what? Throw in this. There's not a lot of guitar solos on the album. All right, which maybe is the reason uh, why some of these are a little bit shorter. Whereas in the old days, you would get a killer uh, JY or Tommy guitar solo. I mean, there are guitar solos on here, but there's not a wealth of them. Um, and I think, like I said, a couple of songs that I really mentioned that are like, you know, three minutes long, an extra minute, throw in an extra guitar solo, throw in the chorus one more time, might have turned a really good song into an incredible song, right? But as it is, as it stands, this is a Dynamite album, Crash of the Crown from Styx, that expect it to be a grower. Don't go stream this online once and, and give it opinion. you got to listen to this a couple times. Uh, everybody knows I am a huge Styx fan. I have been my whole life. I will admit the first two, maybe three listens, I was enjoying it, but I wasn't kind of getting it. Now that I'm on like five, six, and seven... I'm like, yeah, okay, I want to keep getting more out of this. I still have those little criticisms. Like this, I, I thought the mission was much more of an immediate album. The mission grabbed me from first listen. Um, but then go back to Cyclorama, it took me like 10 years to really, really appreciate Cyclorama. Now I absolutely love Cyclorama. So this took me a handful of listens before I was like, all right, this is good. And I, I give them a lot of credit. Uh, it's very, very different. And uh, I like that. I think that they they you know they wanted to take a chance here, and I respect them for it. So again, you've got this, and you've got this. All right, released right around the same time. Uh, if you haven't seen already my review of this, it's here on the channel. I reviewed it about a week ago. I enjoy this too. I enjoy this too. For me though, half the album really strong, good you know sticks like arena rock, prog rock style stuff. Dennis still can sing great, still got great keyboard chops, got great musicians on here. The other half, a little too many ballads, all right? I know there are people who, who are big fans of Dennis, love the ballads, right? That's why they listen to Sticks. Um, I'm okay with that, all right? 
just too many of them on here for me. So I had the same problem with uh, 26 East Volume 1, right? Half really good, the other half just, man, enough of the ballads already. But uh, this might be the last thing we get from him. I don't know. I think these go well together. And for everybody who's, you know, really, oh, but, you know, Sticks were so much better when Dennis is in the band, that ship has sailed, guys. That ship has sailed. Listen to Sticks. Listen to Dennis. That's what you got now. They're not coming together. There's a lot of bad blood behind the scenes. Doesn't really matter who's who's in the wrong, whatever. Sometimes musicians, just when you come right down to it, they can't get along. That is what it is. So you've got two entities now. Give them both a chance. They're both fine albums. I would say for me, this is a little more up my alley, but I'm listening to this and enjoying this as well. You can't. It's okay to have to enjoy both. And that's what we got right now. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Crash of the Crown from Styx. Brand new album. Uh, if you order from the band, you can get a little bundle. You get the T-shirt, which is basically, you know, nice blue shirt with the album cover. All right. And the CD. It was pretty affordable. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is good, folks. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Uh, coming up, we're going to try and squeeze in as many of these today as we can. So I'm hoping to get the new uh, Big Big Train and the new Nad Sylvan in today. Lots of prog stuff happening here on the uh, What's Hot show today. So stay tuned. Hopefully next week we've got uh, some metal stuff. We've got um, Halloween coming on tap, Sirith uh, and assorted other things. So uh, every Wednesday here on the channel is What's Hot with Sea Tranquility Day, the latest and greatest in heavy metal progress of rock, classic rock, hard rock, and jazz fusion. We cover all sorts of the stuff in those genres here on the channel. So uh, thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, of course. We're here on YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, The Monster's Den, Friday morning at the Fun House with Martin Popoff. And then we got some cool review shows coming up for you this weekend. Ranking our favorite five albums from Billy Cobham, drummer extraordinaire, and the many great solo albums, as well as ranking the albums of Survivors. So stay tuned for that and a lot more. I am Pete Pardo. See you real soon. Bye-bye.